What is up, everybody, and welcome back to Lesser Athletes. My name is Chadwin, and today, like always, another interesting video for you here on the channel. NBA teams that have upgraded this offseason. So, clearly, the offseason is kind of fully wrapping up. I think teams are starting to, you know, enter training camp, starting to get in preseason mode. Teams are ready to get at it. And uh, so, we're going to be saying what teams upgrade this offseason. There's going to be a part two to this with uh, what teams downgrade this offseason. But yeah, these are your short videos. They're just going to be explaining why uh, some teams upgrade. Maybe you see your team, maybe you don't. Whatever it might be, we'll see. Other than that, I hope you guys enjoy the video. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe on the video. 6% uh, of you right now are subscribed. Goal is 20 30% by the end of the year. I haven't recently checked if this came up um you will probably see it in the next video if it did and i'm telling y'all y'all better have done it um but other than that than that yeah let's get started so the first team obvious for here is the dallas mavericks for me when you get somebody like kyrie irving back into your team it works well um also with the i know people are going to say Kyrie was there last year. How is that like an upgrade for them? Now you have Kyrie Irving with Luka Doncic for a full year. Also, Dallas Mavericks brought in Grant Williams. Great 3D player. Exactly what they needed. Seth Curry. Exactly what they needed. Derek Lively, the second. Exactly what they need, needed. Prosper uh, from uh, Mer... Mer yeah, yeah, yeah. Never mind. No, wait. Marquette. I don't know why, but I was going to say Mariette. I don't know. That, and like Lafayette and Mariette together. Marquette um, together. Uh, Omax. He's going to be very good. I think he's going to be like a Dorian Finney-Smith um, kind of ideal with the team. Jason Kidd has talked about how he wanted him uh, to be just like that. I think it's going to work well for them. Um, you now have shooters and players that can somewhat play defense around uh, Luka Doncic, who isn't the best at defense, but knows how to elevate everybody's game, pass the ball, score the ball. Kyrie Irving knows how to pass the ball, score the ball, isn't sometimes the best at defense as well. But now you have defenders around. Matisse Thibel would have put the cherry on the uh, ice cream or cherry. What What's the phrase? Cherry on the cone? No. I guess put the cherry right on top, but... Shouldn't there? Never mind. Anyways, um, I think just adding someone like that in the three position would have been very well. But I think adding still Grant Williams, Seth Curry, adding all those players around him is going to make the Dallas Mavericks good. And I have a good feeling they're going to be very good. Uh, next is the Houston Rockets. Of course, people are going to say, oh, well, they kind of downgraded in the future, which, you know, to some extent, you can agree that, you know, when it comes to the future of the Houston Rockets, are they really upgrading where they uh, already spent the money? where they didn't really give their players time to fully develop like maybe Jalen Green I don't know if he needed another year but I think um someone like um well he probably would have another year and a breakout season would be good Sangoon probably could have used another year to fully extend where he was he was on a dominant streak at the end Amen Thompson would have been very nice to have a full year under his belt before they try and compete to know what type of player he's going to be so you know if you really need a point guard position um Someone like Cam Whitmore, Jabari Smith Jr., whatever it be, um, to have that full year with the head coach to work well when you have your players for the future and then get the players that could help you, like a Fred Van Vliet, Dylan Brooks, could have been good for the future. But just in general, talking about next season, obviously Houston Rockets upgraded, adding Jeff Green, Jock Landell. Um, there's somebody else I'm forgetting. Uh, I think recently adding Boban. All of those players combined upgrade this team. Now, how far did they upgrade this team is the biggest question. With a West that's so competitive and players that aren't proven yet, Houston Rockets could be, you know, a play-in team, could be a close playoff team. They could also be a lottery team. They could be the 12th team in the West. I don't think they'll be, you know, the last team because I think the Trailblazers will be. But we'll have to see. But I really do think that the Houston Rockets are an upgraded team this season. Is it for the future, though? Up next is Los Angeles Lakers. When you sign back all your players and you really just lose out on Malik Beasley and Mo Bamba and, you know, some other little players and you get back Gabe Vincent, Cam Reddish, Jackson Hayes, um, Torian Prince, you clearly upgraded. The depth there is very, very nice. And I feel like we say this with the Lakers that, oh my God, their depth is so nice now. And, you know, it doesn't really happen. Uh, good things happen, but I do feel good with the fact that, you know, they brought back the players, D'Lo, Austin Reeves, um, Rui Hachimura, they brought those players back and they also added the depth rather than going after the star and then adding small depth. Um, I really feel good with the Lakers. I actually, 
you'll see in a video soon for my record prediction playoff prediction i feel good about them very well in the playoffs record i don't know we'll talk about that later in that video but los angeles lakers you're obviously a team that upgraded and you know i really do think a strong campaign is coming from them up next is another obvious one is the indiana pacers the pacers man i think they absolutely you could you could very much say they went free agency with the signings of Bruce Brown trading for uh, Obi Toppin, um, just overall great moves by the franchise to add in the wings that you desperately needed to add in the players that um, worked well with your team while also keeping the same players around. Tyrese Halliburton is going to do a have a better year. That Bruce Brown sign was very good. Jarris Walker was very good. Adding Ben Shepard was very good. A great offseason by the Pacers. I really th have great ideals for them to be in the playoffs. Um, it it does just depend. It really just depends on Tyrese Halliburton being healthy. It also depends on is Miles Turner still that guy that can do block shots defensively, be very good, score the ball well. Um, how well is Bruce Brown going to play in the regular season, which he did good last season, but is he going to keep that going for the Pacers? Um, it's just a lot of factors. But I feel well that the Pacers are going to be good. I think Rick Carlisle is going to be a good head coach that's going to potentially be in the coach of the year. My video for the coach of the year came out uh, already, and I have number two. I really feel well with the Pacers going up. They don't really give it to the number one head coach anymore. They give it to coaches that excel their teams. Um, I really feel well with the Pacers, and I'm excited to see what they do. And, of course, I feel like you have to say San Antonio Spurs if I don't, you know, it's biased in a way or it's like obvious but let me state the obvious at least san antonio spurs of course upgraded and the reason's this i think i've said this in a video before i think i said it actually in the award prediction video before in the draft lottery i thought the spurs would have the number one pick it made sense you know you could say oh because he's a big man and he's from uh europe and you know that of course it goes to the spurs whatever and they're big men Yes, but listen here. When you look at every other team, this is before the draft lottery. So this is before the Wizards blew up. When you looked at every single team, you could say that, and I literally said to most people that the Wizards is the only one that you can kind of say, okay. You can look at almost every single team and say that one player is someone that they'll build around. Thunder, Shea, um, Suns, Booker, and of course now KD, they have that's that's a winning team. But when we look at the draft lottery teams, especially, um, Dallas already has Luka, um, Pistons already have Cade and all the extra other stars, um, Rockets already have Jalen Green and all the extra other stars, Charlotte already has LaMelo. Um, this is before, so you can't say Brandon Miller like that. Who did San Antonio have that was truly the number one guy? Keldon Johnson, um, Devin Vassell, and those are guys that are good, but can we confidently say they have all-star potential? And I don't know if you can. And for that reason, I always thought the San Antonio Spurs made sense to have the number one pick, and look at us now. They have the number one pick. Victor Wembanyama is obviously that guy. They needed someone to build around. Every team seemed like they had it except for the San Antonio Spurs. And it makes sense. It makes about NBA balanced. And, you know, if you have, you finally got your guy, of course you upgraded this offseason. Um, they also traded away some players, got Seti Osman. Um, they also, uh, I think they traded Josh Richardson in that trade. Um, they also got um, Cameron Payne, then let go of him. So, definitely an interesting thing to say but i do feel good about the san antonio spurs and potentially what they could do for the next upcoming seasons other than that i hope you guys enjoyed the video there'll be a part two of this for downgraded coming up here soon but other than that i hope you guys enjoyed the video and i'll see you in the next one goodbye